Good morning, and on behalf of New Covenant Community Church, welcome to worship with us on this Ascension Sunday, in which we celebrate Jesus' ascension into heaven after ministering on the earth for the 40 days following his resurrection. My name is Tom Ulrich, and while we certainly regret our inability to gather together in our churches, we rejoice in the ability to praise God regardless of where we are gathered. And so we are truly grateful that you have chosen to share this online opportunity with us. During our worship this morning, at the beginning of our liturgy, we will sing a hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. It's number 144 in our Presbyterian hymnal, and we hope that you will lift your voices in song. Those of you who are on our email list hopefully received these lyrics in, in an email. If you are not currently on our email list but would like to be, we would be glad to include you if you would kindly contact our church office. By doing so, you could also forward to us any prayer requests that you may have. But now, because the psalmist tells us to enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, let us now center ourselves in God's presence as we worship together. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us worship our risen and radiant Lord. For prior to his ascension into heaven, into our darkness, he shined the light of the Lord. Into the world's wilderness, he provided rivers of living water. Into humanity's emptiness, he offered himself as the bread of life. And amid our search for wisdom, he revealed his word of truth. And in gratitude for God's abundant grace, let us now worship together as we join our voices in singing our hymn, Hallelujah, sing to Jesus. Thou on earth both 
as individuals who come together as a community of faith, we recognize that all is not right with us and with the world. And so we acknowledge our sin, our guilt, our doubt, and our regrets. For some of us, our sin has resulted in hurting someone else. For others of us, our sin has created a division between people. But for all of us, our sin separates us from God. Yet the God we know in Jesus Christ longs for reconciliation, walking toward us and inviting us to walk toward God. Let us, therefore, open our hearts to the one who heals us, loves us, and forgives us. I'll offer a spoken prayer on behalf of all of us, and then following our spoken prayer, we'll have a time to share our own silent confessions as well. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, although you call us to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth, we often remain in those places where we feel most comfortable. You strengthen us for your work, but we prefer to secure power and privilege for ourselves. We frequently talk about your kingdom, but we are reluctant to participate in building it as you desire. We look for your return in the clouds, but we do not discern your presence among us in the daily routines of our lives. Have mercy upon us, Lord, and forgive our tendencies to reduce you to an invitation that demands nothing of us. Renew us by your grace and inspire us for your mission so that we may follow you without counting the cost and serve you without condition. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord has swept away our transgressions like, our, like a cloud and our sins like a mist. The Lord has redeemed us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now turn to our scripture passage, which comes to us from the second volume of Luke's writings, the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. The text that we read this morning on Ascension Sunday has several parallels to the Easter story. For just as at the resurrection, where there were two men who delivered a message about Jesus, in this story, there are two men who deliver a message about Jesus. The resurrection story from Luke describes the special clothing these two men were wearing. And this story also highlights their attire. And just as the two men share a message that corrects what the humans are doing and why they are doing it, this story from Acts also does the same. So from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, this is the word of the Lord. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by. They said, 
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word and to God alone be the glory. Amen. What a passage for Ascension Sunday. The risen Jesus who, after 40 days of appearing to the disciples and offering a number of convincing proofs and speaking about the kingdom of God, Jesus was lifted up into the heavens and engulfed in a cloud. And as his cadre of colleagues watched this episode unfold before their very eyes, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. And as a result, for the last 2,000 years, many believers have been gazing skyward, waiting to see Jesus returning on the clouds. But in my opinion, for those 2,000 years, we have been looking in the wrong direction. That's right. We have been looking in the wrong direction. And here's why. According to the text, the two men in white robes are talking to the men of Galilee. They're not talking to us. They are not addressing future generations. They are not speaking to all the world. Their words are spoken to the men of Galilee who were there at that moment. And so because those words are addressed to those disciples, we can assume that the people there expected the message delivered by the two men in white robes, that it would be fulfilled in their lifetime. And yet neither they nor we have seen Jesus return on the cloud. That glorious moment has eluded humanity ever since the book of Acts was written. And so are those words not true? Is the message incorrect? I don't think so. But I do think that we have been looking in the wrong direction. You see, the book of Acts says that when Jesus ascended into heaven, the disciples were told, this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Which leads us to ask, how did disciples see Jesus make his journey into heaven? Not just the last segment of the journey of ascending to the clouds, but his entire journey. Jesus' journey into heaven included a path of service for all humankind, healing the sick, embracing the outcasts, and loving people so profoundly that his journey even led him to the cross. And so if the disciples were going to see Jesus appear to them in the same way that they saw him go into heaven, then they would see Jesus not in the clouds, but at the communion table, not high and lifted up, but in the homeless, not by looking up, but by looking out, by looking at the people around us. The two men in white robes invited those disciples to see Christ in the people who provide hope and to act against the dominant modes of society by discerning Christ's presence of, in places of need and to see a new vision, to create a new picture and to behold a new reality in the midst of the current reality around us. And the same is true for us. In our society, we have far too many heaven gazers and far too few true disciples. Too many people who prefer to calculate the days and the times when they will meet Jesus in the clouds and far too few believers who are actually willing to meet Jesus here on earth. You see, the truth is that Jesus comes to us again and again and again if only we know where to look 
And by God's grace, Jesus is always coming to us here and now. And the only thing we are required to do is to keep our eyes open. So where are we looking? Because a community of faith, a community of service, a community founded on the teachings of Jesus Christ will certainly know where to look, right? Indeed, in this time of pandemic, where are we looking? Because Luke's gospel tells us that Jesus was born in a manger since there was no room for his family in the inn. Are we looking in the overcrowded dwellings in our cities where unhealthy living conditions fester in the low rent districts of every community? Because Jesus was willing to touch a leper and welcome a despised Samaritan. Are we looking for Jesus among the people who have been despised by our culture and not welcomed by our society? Because Jesus challenged the traditional understandings of Scripture. Are we looking for Jesus in new interpretations that beckon us, even at this time of pandemic, to new areas of ministry? Are we looking for Jesus in the compassionate words of individuals who change the world one person at a time? Are we looking for Jesus in the people who work for peace in the world and to endeavor to fashion swords into plowshares? Are we looking for Jesus in the people who offer food to the hungry, who take the children in their arms and bless them, and who reach out to people who speak a different language, or live in a different land. If we are expecting Jesus to appear, where are we going to look? For the truth is that Jesus comes to us again and again and again. And the only thing we are required to do is to keep our eyes open. If we keep our eyes open, perhaps we'll see Jesus in someone like a 90-year-old woman named Suzanne Holyards in Belgium, who was taken to the hospital where she began to complain of shortness of breath and experiencing a loss of appetite. Later on, when she tested positive for COVID-19, she was placed in intensive care, where the medical staff prepared to put her on a respirator. But seeing the other people in the unit around her, Suzanne Holyards looked at the doctors and said, I don't want to use artificial respiration. Save it for these other younger patients. I already had a good life. And in her eyes, I imagine the doctors saw a glimpse of the one who said, greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Suzanne Holyards died two days later, but a life was saved through her sacrifice. If we keep our eyes open, we may see Jesus in someone like Mario Salerno, an owner of 18 apartment buildings who canceled the rent for all his tenants saying he did not want his renters to stress about payments during the coronavirus pandemic. Although he is likely foregoing hundreds of thousands of dollars in income by canceling their rent, Mario Salerno said that his only interest was in alleviating stress for his renters, even those who were still employed and now working from home. He said to them, I just told them to look out for your neighbor and make sure that everyone has food on their table. And those tenants probably saw a glimpse of the one who said, blessed are the merciful. Or perhaps we may see Jesus in a person like Shannon Anderson, a third grade teacher in Indiana who encouraged her students for a class project to draw stuffed animals from their own imaginations. She then sent their main character illustrations to a company that custom made each of the third grade students' characters into a stuffed animal just for them. Then wearing a mask and gloves, she drove to each of the students' houses 
to deliver the custom-made animal to bring hope, comfort, and joy to each of her students. And when she did, I imagine that every student saw a glimpse of the one who said, Let the children come unto me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Yes, my friends, Jesus comes to us again and again and again if we only know where to look. And by God's grace, Jesus is always coming to us here and now. And the only thing we are required to do is to keep our eyes open. So where are we looking? Every morning when we awaken, where are we looking? Let us look for Jesus everywhere around us in the hands of knitters who make masks at this time of pandemic, in the hands of cooks who prepare meals for kids and families who are struggling, in the hands of professionals who continue to work on the front lines of this crisis. Let us look for Jesus not in the sky, but everywhere around us, in the street artists who write words of encouragement in chalk, in the kind voices that say, I'm here whenever you need me. In the gracious gifts generously placed in the offering plate to promote the ministry of Jesus Christ. Let us look for Jesus everywhere around us, refusing to live yesterday over and over again, but instead ready to encounter Christ, not oblivious to our surroundings, but wide awake and watching for the Lord who never tires of coming to us. The Lord never tires coming to us again and again and again. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Redeemer, who furnishes forgiveness when sin has crippled us, Ascended Savior, who fills us with hope when despair has drained our hearts. Loving Lord, who embraces us with the love to be shared with the world. Because we know that faithful worship also includes service. Enable us to discern where you are calling us to go at this time of uncertainty. Equip us to embody the good news that we proclaim. So that we may work for the day when sickness will be shaped into celebration when fear will be formed into fellowship, when distancing will be replaced with dancing. On this Ascension Sunday, guard us from focusing so much of our attention on the skies and looking for signs of your presence in the clouds that we fail to notice your image in the people where we can serve in our communities. As citizens of your kingdom, fill us with the desire to act as you would wish by caring for those who are hurting, by promoting your work of new life and abundant life, and by discerning your presence in the people and situations that offer love, hope, and peace. On this Memorial Day weekend, we also give you thanks for all those who have faithfully lived and triumphantly died, for all the blessed memories and enduring hopes, for the ties that bind us to the unseen world and for the heroic dead who encompass us like a cloud of witnesses. On this weekend of memory, we also call to mind the vast numbers of unremembered, the victims and casualties of war and rebellion, of drought and starvation, of poverty and pandemic. Move among us here to intervene and defend, to uphold and uplift, and to hasten the day when all your children will dwell together in peace. As we continue to navigate the uncertain waters of, these, of this COVID crisis, we pray that you would still any storms in our hearts and lives. Encompass with your care the medical professionals and essential workers whose labor is so critical to our well-being that we cannot do without them. For the heroes who provide us with food, who mend our homes and highways, who bring us light and heat, who bless us with health and safety and meet many other needs, we are profoundly grateful. We also offer our prayers on behalf of all those people who are sick or struggling, 
And this morning we especially lift up to you one of our members who is recovering from ankle surgery. One of our members who is recovering from a broken wrist. And the employee at Starbucks whose father is struggling with his mobility and whose mother is having the issues that she needs a sense of peace. Hold them in your tender care of the great physician. Enable them to experience your peace that passes all understanding and strengthen them as they persevere along the path of recuperation. Shape us in the disciples that you desire us to be so that we may be one with creation in praising you so that we may be one with each other in fellowship and mission, and so that we may be one with you in loving all people. Bless us with such grace that our lives may become a blessing for the world, and in course of the days ahead, strengthen us in the faith so that we may exercise the gifts that you have given to us in the service of our fellow human beings. Give us the capacity not just to envision a new earth, but the will to work for it and the grace to live on it. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught his disciples when praying to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God's love in Jesus Christ is the most powerful force in the world. And the love of Jesus Christ inspires us to share generously the gifts that we have received from God. The gifts we share enable us to serve as God's witnesses to the ends of the earth as we utilize our gifts and talents to serve our Lord faithfully. At this time of pandemic, let us now seek to honor God with our tithes and our offerings, trusting that God will bless us through them and enhance the quality of life for all people. And the church may also promote the dignity of every human being. If you would like to send in a financial contribution to the church, we would humbly and gratefully receive it. And we would thank God for the gift and we would thank God for you. And if you are discovering a new way to share your talents and skills with the world, we too thank God for your gift. And we too thank God for you. May God bless you as you contribute your financial resources and your human resources to God's church and to all the world. And now, sisters and brothers in Christ, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore.